This uh, little testimony would be incomplete unless I asked Reverend Dan Haas to come up here and stand at my side, Dan. Dan, yeah. A lot of applause for him. <laughs> we, uh, I pastored a parish, a Roman Catholic congregation here in Aurora called St. Nicholas. I had a, an experience of a Hispanic family, members of the church, who came to me and said, we just lost our second son. Our second son was shot in the head, just uh, a minute away from here on Middle Avenue. And um, praying about it, I, I was just so torn up about it. I mean, can you imagine losing two of your children uh, right here in Aurora? And basically, I just called some people that I knew and said, hey, let's get together. Let's get together on Middle Avenue and uh, and to pray and uh, there was a young man who at that time God put into my life Dan Haas never knew Dan but we started to come together after that first vigil and share our love for Jesus Christ our love for the city of Aurora and a belief that Jesus wanted us to try to make a difference in this city we were up to 26 plus homicides a year. Every time we turned around, there was another killing. We, we did about 250 sites of killing here in Aurora since 94. We've had about 250 vigils. And uh, many great gifts have come out of that. And one is God's blessing Aurora. We, we had last year a year without one homicide. Well, that, that's a gift of God. And a lot of hard work. You know, one of the great gifts that's come out of this is just a spiritual bond between Dan and myself. We really love each other in the Lord Jesus. You know, I love this guy. He's my brother. You know, I don't look at him and say, well, here's a non-denominational guy. I look at him and say, here's my brother. We've prayed together. We've laughed together. We've cried together. We've uh, eaten a thousand times at the Royal Pancake House, <laughs> strategizing, where is the Lord calling the city? My witness today is this, is that if, if you hunger for Jesus, if He's the center of your life, then the Lord will knock down these barriers that we so oftentimes have between us. We came together out of tragedy, young people being killed, being murdered. And out of that has come a tremendous spiritual friendship. Dan? <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, it, it, it is a. Uh, I, was, I was thinking about a lot of things as John was sharing. <clears throat> First, uh, and I don't, I don't want to minimize this. I don't want to minimize what, what you were wanting to add to this, but um, I really do believe, as it says there in First John. Uh, in the epistle that our fellowship is with him and they're ready that, that they want us to author John wanted us to have fellowship with him in Christ uh, as, as they were having fellowship and that common life of Jesus together is what um, drew David and I together uh, one thing I deeply respect about David is that <clears throat> he sets a time sets aside time every week to go away uh, to pray. He has a personal retreat at least one day a week. Um, that has been a huge encouragement to me. Um, our, our relationship has been in Christ. Now there's an interesting um, thing that happens in the movie The Fiddler on the Roof. Remember where Rev Tebji comes in and he sits down by his wife and he says, I know we've been married for 25 years, but 
do you do you love me? What he really meant was, do you like me? You know, we, uh, we, our marriage was arranged, and um, there is a bond of love in Jesus that, that David had. But uh, what happened is we we like each other too. I mean, and, and, uh, uh, in a in, in a healthy way, in a filial way, and I think that that's part of this whole fellowship thing as well. It's um, because I mean, I have to love my wife in an agape sense, but. Man, I hope I, I I love her and I like her in the other sense as well. That she's just not obligated to be with me. We pray together many times, which I deeply appreciate. When we get together, we always talk about Christ, what He's doing in our personal lives. Because we have had some difficult times, not between the two of us, but we've been in difficult situations. Um, you know, initially when we started to pray together, um, do the prayer coalition. Uh, everybody didn't like that in town. Um, there were some very strong political uh, reactions against us. There were some from the community against us. Um, people didn't necessarily like a Protestant person praying with a Catholic person, um, and vice versa. And people let us know that. Um, but so, through all of those things, uh, God has used it to to reduce the murder rate, to draw a community together, to get people to pray, um, to have a full-time person that works with the victims uh, of, of murder victims and their families. Um, and he has, I believe, I believe the only difference between Aurora and Chicago, personally, in terms of the violence, isn't that our police department works harder or works smarter or has done more more law enforcement things because I believe they're trying to do that in Chicago too. That takes nothing away from um, what the Royal Police Department does because they're doing a phenomenal job. But there was something that happened spiritually in our community that only God could do in terms of coming against, um, in the spiritual world, violence, of uniting um, people across our city to pray into this, I mean, there, there were thousands of people that were, were praying for what God was doing. And so, it, it, there's a spiritual dynamic that will never reduce violence unless that's incorporated. And, and I believe that's where Chicago is struggling right now. That, that has to come to the forefront. But in our relationship, I have valued um, the fact that David uh, knows Christ, that we pray together, that we love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love each other. And that's been a great encouragement. Uh, it is a real friendship, and uh, I, I value that very much. You know, in all these years, uh, we've hung out together. That's right. Never once have I felt, as a Roman Catholic priest, that this guy's got a hidden agenda to convert me to uh, <laughs> to become non-denominational. You know, and, and hopefully Dan, you've never felt that. That I I got a secret agenda to convert you into a Catholic, uh, even though your wife used to be a Catholic. <laughs> I still be shit sometimes. But, 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 but you know, never once in all these years since 1994 have I ever felt that either of us was laying a heavy agenda on each other. That we really accept each other as genuine disciples of Jesus. I know this man's a disciple of the Lord. I have no doubt. And I'm not out to change him. He's not out to change me. Jesus is out to change both of us. Amen. For me, a, a great joy was in 1994 when the city was in the midst of all this turmoil. Uh, people were leaving. And again, if you weren't here during that time, I don't think you can really appreciate what it was like. I mean, there was a palpable fear. People didn't want to live here. People were leaving here in droves. Businesses were struggling. Um, everybody thought Aurora was, you know, was a horrible place, and it was a dark place at that time period. Uh, people were in despair. The police department was in despair, and um, they were very welcoming to us and always very supportive of us. But I was praying, God, what can I do about this violent situation? What do you want to do? And the thing that the Lord put on my heart was that I needed to find a Catholic priest to pray with him. Yeah. So I thought, well, Lord, how is that ever going to work out? I remember coming home uh, one afternoon, and my wife said, 
uh, hey, have you listened to the messages on the, on the uh, answering machine? I said, no. She said, I think you should go, go listen to it. <laughs> so I turned it on and said, hi, uh, my name is Dave Wingworth. I'm a Catholic priest at St. Nicholas Church. I understand you want to pray with the priest. I said, I think I'm the guy. <laughs> I said, great. I called him up and I said, I think you're the guy. <laughs> I was looking out over the city of Aurora and I felt God speak to me that I should stay in Aurora and be part of the Bible. Uh, that's why I'm here today. Still believing that, that God wants to bring revival. Now one thing I am absolutely com convinced of in my own heart is that we will never experience revival in Aurora uh, unless all the churches are part of that and that includes Catholic Church um, you know that I mean if we're going to touch a city if we're really going to impact a city and God's going to reach a city then, then spiritual renewal has to start in every congregation um, in our community and, and particularly in, in Catholic faith because you represent 50% of the population here can't have revival unless you're part of it. Our, our relationship has always been in Christ, and I've appreciated it so much. So thank you, Dave.